Shut up, you're supposed to listen to what I say, shouted Tom as he suddenly slapped me across the face. What? Go cool off outside and don't bother coming back. It was the first time a man had ever hit me, and I was in shock. Frozen in disbelief, it took a few moments for the pain and fear to set in. I can't take this anymore. I've decided to leave this house and get a divorce. I had been preparing for this day. My name is Jennifer. I'm just your average working wife, three years into marriage. Things are looking good this month, I muttered as I checked my bank account. Ever since I was single, I've loved saving money. Growing up in a not-so-rich family, I've always been used to living frugally. Thanks to that, even as an adult, living modestly was never a problem for me. Always spending carefully, saving as much as I could, I've invested those savings into mutual funds and stocks. Having majored in business administration in college, I was quite familiar with economics and how money works. I started investing in college, and so far, it's been smooth sailing. I always dreamt of buying a house where my entire family could live happily. I'm going to reach my goal soon. I met Tom at the same company I worked at. He was kind and reasonably good-looking, popular among the female employees. Tom and I hit it off when we worked together, and things progressed from dating to marriage smoothly. We don't have any kids yet, being in our third year of marriage and considering my age. I kind of want to have kids soon, but with both of us working, our schedules hardly align. Tom's not interested in trying to have a baby. Every time I try to discuss it, he changes the subject. Maybe I should quit my job and take some time for us as a couple, but if Tom doesn't cooperate, I can't just quit. The reason Tom's not interested in having a kid, our current lifestyle suits him just fine. Though we work at the same company, our departments differ. Tom's department doesn't require overtime, but the pay is the lowest in the company. My department is crucial for the company, so while there's a lot of overtime, the pay is higher. Tom gets home on time and lazes around playing video games until I get back. But if we have a kid, he won't be able to keep doing that. That's why he's not enthusiastic about starting a family. For now, my focus is on building a home for our potential growing family. That's why I keep saving. I believe that once a child is born, Tom will surely help out. Another thing that bothers me is my mother-in-law. She lives just a five-minute walk away from our apartment. Right after we got married, my father-in-law's health deteriorated. We were told that he might need care, so we moved closer. But he passed away shortly after due to old age. Ever since then, my mother-in-law has been coming to our house almost every day. It would be fine if she just came by, but she always has something sarcastic to say. I'm home, you're late, aren't you? She mumbles this without making eye contact with me. Good evening. Do you always get home this late? Are you really working? I wonder, is she going to make sarcastic comments like this today as well? I'm exhausted from work, so I at least want to relax at home. But thanks to my mother-in-law's sarcasm, my home has become a place where I can't feel at ease. So, what are you planning to do for Tom's dinner since you're getting home at this hour? It's always like this. She only worries about Tom, who probably just lounges around after leaving work on time, and she blames me. I'll start preparing it now. You're going to start making it now? What time do you think it is? While I'm being persistently blamed, Tom continues playing his video game. Where did the kind Tom go? Or is this his true self? In any case, why do I have to prepare meals for a fully grown adult who is not a child? We both work, so if Tom would do the housework when he gets home early, my burden would be significantly lighter. Such thoughts bubble up in my head. My mother-in-law has never worked and is a housewife. She has no intention of understanding the feelings of working women. From the start, besides if she saw Tom doing housework, she would definitely start helping. 
then I would get sarcastic comments from her again. Well, there's no way Tom is going to do the housework, so this worry is unnecessary. Hey, Jennifer, are you listening? Ah, uh, sorry, I'll start preparing the meal right away. In the end, it seems like it's more peaceful for me to just do everything alone while being criticized. That's all right. I've prepared everything and already fed Tom. Oh, I see. Thank you. Of course, she hasn't prepared anything for me. I just need to prepare my own meal, so that's fine, I guess. Sadly, this has become such a usual thing that I can think like this. While I'm preparing dinner in the kitchen, I hear this conversation. Hey Tom, I have a dinner party with my friends coming up. It's at that new French restaurant, so the membership fee is around $200. But could you cover it for me? Yeah, and you know, I want to get some new clothes and go to the salon. So could you give me an additional $500? Okay, got it. Tom responds easily without taking his eyes off his game. $500 for a meal with friends. What kind of sense of money does she have? Then Tom rummages through my purse without asking, takes out $500, and hands it to his mother. Thanks, Tom. You're a lifesaver. She thanks only Tom and puts the money in her wallet. I'm stunned. What have these people just done? Can they not see me? When my mother-in-law goes to the bathroom, I go up to Tom and confront him. Why are you taking money out of my wallet? I had no choice. I didn't have any cash on me. That doesn't mean you can just take cash out of someone else's wallet. And my mother-in-law, who accepts the money, is just as bad. If you can't give her the money yourself, you should have said no. We don't have that kind of money to spare. Tom and I are arguing when my mother-in-law comes back. What happened? Is something wrong? When my mother-in-law asks this, I'm about to tell her the truth when Tom interrupts me. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Does Tom not understand how hard it is to pull $500 out of our budget? I manage our finances since my income is higher. I pay for everything from rent to living expenses from my account. Tom doesn't contribute his salary, he uses it all for his allowance, and he spends it all on games, gambling, all on entertainment. I asked him to at least contribute to the living expenses, but he just dodged the issue. Jay asked last month, I know he gave his mother $500 because she said she wanted to buy clothes and a bag. The month before that, it was for a kimono, cosmetics, salon, and spa expenses. When I think about it, he's been giving her $500 every month. As I'm stewing in my thoughts, my mother-in-law says, I heard there seemed to be a dispute about money. That's why I came by. Don't make a fuss just because I'm offering some pocket money. Doing a good deed for your parents won't bite you back. You'd be pleased if your elderly parents were well taken care of, right? My mother-in-law doesn't seem to be faced at all. The whole family has a warped sense of money. No matter how much we save, it just ends up being spent on my mother-in-law's extravagant expenses. Determined I thought today has to be the day, and with all the courage I could muster, I spoke up to her. We really don't have the extra money. To be honest, supporting you with $500 every month is really hard on us. Upon hearing this, my mother-in-law let out a deep sigh. You see, this money is for socializing expenses. Buying new clothes and dining out with the neighbors is an important part of socializing, isn't it? If it's just for chatting with the neighbors, isn't a coffee shop good enough? Why does it always have to be a fancy French restaurant or a high-end inn? She's always updating her wardrobe for every occasion and picking up the tab for everyone. Such a show-off. But it's not like she's liked by everyone. In fact, she's just being taken advantage of. You, on the other hand, hardly connect with the neighbors. I'm doing all this networking for you. She's the one choosing to do all this. I didn't ask her to. Being stingy with socializing expenses, 
Now that's just miserly. You're not skimping on Tom's socializing budget, too, are you, Jennifer? He's quite a penny pincher, you know. I always have a hard time because she skimps on the drinking and gambling expenses. Tom's drinking parties and gambling are not social expenses. They are purely for entertainment. Being stingy about spending money for socializing with colleagues, Tom will never get promoted at this rate, poor thing. Jennifer, you really need to review your household budget. Tom and his mother-in-law say whatever they please. Today was just dreadful again. Maybe she felt relieved after taking the money and saying what she wanted to say. But as she headed to the exit, she glared at me again. If you want to get divorced, Tom, I think it's fine. Anytime. Your room is still there, just as you left it. You can come back anytime, all right? Thanks, Mom. With a rough swing, she closed the door behind her and left. What was that all about just now? When I turned around, Tom had already started playing his video game again. I was so angry I laid into him. Why did you give her $500 month after month? Where is that money even coming from? Without stopping his game, Tom just ignored what I was saying. Are you even listening? I'm asking you what you're thinking. Unable to see the TV, Tom answered with a bothered look on his face. What's the big deal? It's just $500. Stop being so stingy. Do you have any idea how hard it is to take out $500 from our household budget? But like Mom said, it's social expenses, so it's a necessary expense. That's not a necessary expense at all. Why does it cost $500 just to talk to the neighbors? Aren't all the meals being paid by your mom? This is ridiculous. No matter how desperately I talked, Tom just wouldn't listen. Whether he found it annoying or just wanted to get back to his game, he didn't even try to understand what I was saying. Also, are you considering getting divorced? If you're going to be that cheeky, I have my own thoughts on the matter. Tom didn't deny it. He was actually considering divorce. Can you just move? I want to play my game. Saying that, he brushed me aside with a gesture and started his game again. Maybe it's hopeless. Maybe getting a divorce is for the best. But I just can't make that decision knowing the kind Tom I used to know. And then, an incident occurred on my way home from work. I stopped by the local supermarket. I usually pay with cash, but I didn't have enough on me today. So I decided to pay with my credit card. That's when the cashier gave me an awkward look. Ma'am, it seems like this card can't be used. Ah, huh? why is that? It seems you've reached your limit. What a bad feeling washed over me. I hurried home. Tom, Tom, are you here? There was no response from Tom. Then I saw Tom's bag on the floor, and papers were scattered everywhere. What is this? I looked at the papers, and they were bills for numerous credit cards. These credit cards were family cards, and the account was linked to mine. Tom is bad with money management, often maxing out his credit cards. That's why his cards are maxed out, and he can't use them anymore. Since then, the only credit card Tom has is this family card. I quickly looked through the bill and saw a list of things I didn't recognize. Clothes, bags, shoes, high-end sushi, French cuisine. All the bills were for luxury items. The total amount for all the bills was an astounding $50,000. I was stunned and froze on the spot. I checked the number of zeros multiple times to make sure, but there was no mistake. And then Tom and his mother arrived. What's this about the credit card being charged $50,000? Did you use this? Yeah, I used it. What do you mean by that? Mom asked me to go shopping with her and out to meals. Why did you use this card? It can't be helped. My cards are unusable. It's fine, isn't it? This is just filial piety. 
this money is going to be withdrawn from my account, you know, my account. We're married, so it's not just your account, right? I collapsed on the spot, my knees giving out beneath me. All the money I had worked so hard to save up was used up so easily. Jennifer, you can't say things like my money when it comes to our shared finances as a married couple. As always, my mother-in-law showed no sign of remorse. Jennifer, you're lying about not being able to give me money even though you have it. I wonder just how greedy you can be. Without any apology, Tom's blatant defiance is driving me to the brink of rage. All the feelings I've been holding back are now surging up, exploding all at once. Don't mess with me. This is the savings. I worked so hard since before I was married to give it back to me. Hey, what are you talking about? What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. That's how marriage works, right? That's right. Instead of you showing gratitude to my parents, I'm doing it on your behalf. You should be more thankful to me. And to think he's been receiving $500 a month for pocket money, and he even secretly used a credit card behind my back. This account even includes the money I saved up before I was married. Using it without asking is no different than stealing. Give it back to me. Hey, cut it out. Who are you calling a thief? Angered by the word thief, Tom responds irritably. This credit card is a family card. I can use it however I want since I'm part of the family. That's right. Tom has really been doing a lot for me. In fact, you didn't notice the $50,000 bill until it came, right? So there's no problem. The account linked to the credit card wasn't one I used regularly, so I didn't notice right away. But that doesn't mean this situation is acceptable at all. That's not the point. Give me back my money. Unable to contain my anger, I burst into tears and plead with him. Shut up. You're my wife, so you should just listen to what I say. You should be grateful I even married someone like you. With that, Tom suddenly slapped me across the face. Cool off outside and don't bother coming back. This is the first time I've ever been hit by a man, and I'm in shock. I was so surprised that I couldn't move. A few moments later, the pain and fear hit me. I can't take it anymore. I finally decided to divorce him and leave this house. That night, I meticulously planned my next steps and went to bed. The next morning, Tom nonchalantly placed a single piece of paper in front of me. It was a divorce form, and Tom's section was already filled out. From now on, if you complain about me, we're getting divorced. If you don't want to div, then don't talk back to me. I'll handle the money from now on. With that, Tom grabbed the bank book and left for work. I couldn't believe how easily I had gotten the divorce form, which I thought would be the hardest part. Does he really think I still want to be with him after all he's done? Does he think the word divorce scares me? I realized that Tom's head is in the clouds, but for me, this is perfect. I'll gladly use this divorce form. All my love for Tom has completely disappeared. And then there's this. The investment trusts and stocks I've been working on since before I was married. There haven't been any major losses, and everything is going smoothly. I've reached a point where I can live off the returns alone, and with just the stock earnings, I've managed to save around $500,000. Of course, Tom doesn't know about this money because it's in a different bank account. I was worried about keeping such a large sum of money in one account, so I have several. The bank book that Tom took is just one of them. I filled out my section of the divorce form. With the divorce form in hand, I quickly packed my bags and left the house. Then I went to the office and successfully submitted the divorce form. For the time being, I took refuge at my parents' house. Seeing me show up with a ton of luggage, my surprised parents listened as I explained the situation. While enjoying a leisurely stay at my parents' house, I started checking real estate listings, 
Commuting from my parents' house is too far, so I need to find a new place to live soon. Then, while browsing on my smartphone, I stumbled upon an interesting listing. A newly built house near the station, a perfect 15-minute walk from work. I immediately went to the real estate agency to inquire. The house is currently under construction and is expected to be completed in two months. The interior work hasn't started yet, so they said they can accommodate some of my requests. The location is great, and there are many interested buyers. I decided on the spot to buy the house and even completed the payment that day. I stayed at my parents' house while preparing for the move, and everything went smoothly. Hey Jennifer, one day out of the blue, my ex-husband spoke to me at the office. I had been so thrilled with the hustle and bustle since deciding on our new home that I had completely forgotten about him. Where the hell are you? Why aren't you answering your phone? I had received dozens, if not hundreds, of calls from Tom, but I had been ignoring them all. And what about the divorce papers? I couldn't believe it and checked with the office, and they told me it's already been submitted. What the hell is going on? What do you mean what's going on? You're the one who shoved those divorce papers at me. I just did as you told me to. Don't screw with me. There's no way they would accept divorce papers submitted without my consent. Tom had handed me the divorce papers himself. How selfish can he be? A divorce application submitted without my agreement won't be accepted. If I sue, you'll be charged with forgery. Serves you right. But you gave them to me, Tom. Your section is filled out by you. Even though I explained this, Tom wouldn't listen. I won't accept it, employees passing by turned around at Tom's loud yelling inside the office. The divorce is already finalized. I've already reported it to the company. You should properly report it to your boss as well. I tried to distance myself from Tom. Then he grabbed my arm tightly. I won't accept it, you hear me? I won't let you have it your way. You can't escape from me, he said in a low voice. And then he left. The new home was wonderful. My favorite room, furniture, and appliances, being surrounded by my favorites, filled my heart in ways I had forgotten since I used to dread going home. Being at home truly gives me peace of mind. Then the doorbell rang. I looked at the monitor, but no one was there. Who is it? No answer. Suspicious, I looked around from the balcony, but no one was there. The next day, the company was closed, so I was eager to get started early in the morning. I'm going to clean up the house today. I was pumped up when I heard a loud knock on the door. Wondering what it was, I went outside, and there she was, my mother-in-law, to be precise, my former mother-in-law. What do you want? I asked. It's not a matter of what do you want. What are you thinking, moving out without discussing it with the family? She scolded. Ha, huh? had Tom not told his mom about us before that? How did she know where this house was? Then I remembered the doorbell ringing last night. Tom must have followed me and figured out my address. Didn't Tom tell you we're divorced? I informed her this is just a lover's quarrel. Withdraw the divorce right now, she insisted. If you don't withdraw it, I'll see you for forging documents. Tom chimed in out of nowhere. He was still saying such things. Why would that be the case? You are the one who wrote it, right? I was losing my patience. While Tom and I were talking, his mom had let herself into my house and was looking around. Well, this is a big house. Is it a duplex? With this size, maybe I could move in, she mused. Hey, don't just enter without asking. I protested. Oh my, listen to you, accusing your parents of being a thief, she retorted unabashedly. Tom and his mom were speaking as if they could say whatever they wanted. I kept my emotions in check and spoke calmly. The divorce is finalized. The divorce papers were indeed written by Tom. 
If you still insist on suing for document forgery, then let's settle this in court with lawyers, I proposed. Lawyers? Court. These words seemed to finally make her grasp the situation. She looked unsettled but then said, Well, if you two are getting divorced, this house belongs to Tom, right? He and I will live here. I was astounded. She had no understanding of Tom at all. Tom, with his low income and suspended credit cards, there's no way he could afford a house. This house is in my name. I bought it with my savings, I clarified. Hey, what do you mean by that? How can you afford to buy a house? Tom finally reacted. I told them both that I bought the house with the money I made from investments. Realizing that the house was not in Tom's name, his mother became furious. What is this all about? What are we supposed to do now? She demanded. There was a reason she was panicking. Upon hearing about the new house from Tom, she had sold the house they were living in. I was amazed that she could make such a bold move without even discussing living together with me. Well, even if she had asked, I wouldn't have agreed to live together. Fine, let's settle this in court. I will make sure to get that divorce withdrawn. I won't accept this divorce, she declared, storming off with Tom. Even if they did take this to court, the divorce papers were unmistakably written by Tom. And does he even have the money to hire a lawyer? I doubt it. Well, if I do get sued, I'll think about it. Then afterward, I continued to live peacefully alone in my home. A while passed without any issues, so I thought the matter was settled. However, Tom started coming to my house repeatedly, asking to get back together. Jennifer, I'm sorry for everything. Let's start over, he pleaded. I couldn't believe it. After everything he had said to me, not knowing when Tom might lose his temper, I ignored all his calls and visits. But his actions escalated. Hey, you've got some nerve ignoring me. I'll break this window if you don't come out right now, he threatened. It was becoming more and more like harassment. He even started stalking me at work, calling incessantly, making it impossible for me to do my job. He would sometimes wait for me at the exit of my workplace or near my house. Scared, I started going home with a friend and asked my boss for help. It had gotten to a point where it was affecting my daily life, so I decided to consult the police. Subsequently, the police started patrolling around my home twice a day. During one of these patrols, they caught my ex-husband yelling outside my new house, and he was arrested on the spot. Stalking, harassment, and threats. He was found guilty of these criminal acts and was arrested. Of course, he was also fired from his job. He must be serving his time in prison by now. The rumor that my ex-mother-in-law's son had been arrested for making threats spread quickly through the neighborhood. My former mother-in-law, who used to socialize with the neighbors, couldn't even step outside her house anymore, so she moved far away. According to the grapevine, she now lives alone in a small old wooden apartment because she doesn't have her own house to return to. Finally free from all of this, I immediately contacted my parents. They had taken care of me back in the countryside, so I asked them if they wanted to live together in my new house and they were delighted to join me. We weren't exactly wealthy, but they raised me with care. Now I finally have the chance to do something kind for my parents, and it makes me happy. Next, I'd like to invite my friends over for a barbecue or have drinks at my place. I've lived my life thinking that I just needed to endure things, but from now on, I want to take better care of myself and cherish every day.